He praised the Lord. Now we give thanks for a, another great day in the presence of the Lord, laboring with Christ Jesus and with all of you across the network. And this is the Voice Over the Nations Network. And I am Apostle Dr. Eureka Stewart. Uh, welcome to another great time of ministry, sharing, caring, uh, transforming power. Um, I really, I, 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 with all my heart, believe that um, the full power of the word will reach you today and that you will be uh, magnificently transformed by it. I happen to be so blessed as to have been the founding uh, member, or the founding pastor of uh, Bethany Covenant Alive Ministries, um, uh, Bethesda, Empowered to Heal, World Healing Day. Uh, these uh, ministries, and I believe more to come, are God-breathed, and i um, happy to share that with you. And of course, the ministry of prayer. We say praise the Lord. And so, we are going to visit the book of Matthew and Jesus Christ is here in Matthew chapter 6 uh, and uh, um, the verse 9 uh, where Jesus Christ is delivering a model prayer which you have known hitherto as the Lord's Prayer. It is actually the disciples' prayer given to those whom, uh, who, who, whom he, he, he knew clung to him with earnest and fervent love and he spoke this to them. Uh, he is revealing uh, some very important things here in Matthew chapter six and uh, in the model prayer called the disciples prayer now Christ Jesus reveals the father he is revealing the other dimensions in this prayer I'm here to lead you forever in truth and in revelational truth by the power of the Holy Ghost. Well, you may say, well, I didn't know that. Well, neither did I before the Holy Ghost revealed it to me. But he is revealing the Father, the source of his power, the source of his authority. And the fact that he was here to do the Father's will. And so, we're following the footsteps of Christ Jesus as he reveals these truths to us. And now, in Matthew chapter 6, and this is very uh, crucial. Uh, you might have been saying these words since you were uh, knee-high to your mother. But I want you to look at it through the eyes of an apostle. And the Father is indeed not only the creator, he did not use a model. He spoke to himself and all things came to be whether material or immaterial. <laughs> and 
the Father whom we know, the Father whom we thought we knew. Some of us have a, a different uh, uh, image, a mental image, but the Father is one God and is divine presence. He's not a man, does not change his mind, does not, I mean, he's everlasting, but also eternal without end. Eternity is vested in him. He is eternity itself. We praise the Lord. Now these, these words that I'm going to speak to you, uh, listen uh, to me. Uh, for the next 26 minutes or so as I take you through what the Lord has shown to me. Christ Jesus reveals and through this prayer in addition to saying our Father what he's actually doing when he is saying our Father, he is speaking to all men everywhere. He actually includes you in the class where he is. He is saying our Father, not laying claim to the Father just for himself. This selfless Son of God. So, he reveals provision in this prayer. The book of Matthew, and you'll find the Gospels to be consistent. And he's saying, oh, do not look to your own life, don't worry about it. The Father has already provided all that you need, want, and desire. But now, in this prayer, the disciples' prayer, revealing the source of his strength, but he's also revealing the source and the origin of the kingdom of God. He also reveals that God is the source, the divine provider. And further on, he, hallelujah, declares that the Father forgives our sins through the Son. Continuing, he declares the Father's ability to bring about deliverance in your life. This is Matthew chapter 6, the familiar disciples' prayer. Having detailed those uh, points to clarify uh, my thought today for you. I'm going to pray this prayer with you and for you in this manner. And Jesus begins, no, no wonder looking up to heaven as he is often seen and have been known to, to do. Our Father in heaven. He's saying this. I'm saying it like this Father, Father, you who are in the heavenlies, you who are above 
sustaining. Father, your name is honored and holy. Father, let your kingdom come. Let that which is with you, let that kingdom come through me. And Father, today thy will be done. Thy will be done, Father, through me today. Thy will be done in the earth, in the hemispheres, the regions, the vast areas of light places and dark places, yet thy will be done. Thy will be done over uninhabited places, thy will be done. Wherever men are, Wherever your spirit rests, thy will be done. Father, let it be done as it is already done in heaven. Let that which you have prepared in the heavenlies, that which exists, and Jesus is talking with authority because this is where he came from. Later on in these broadcasts, you will hear me explain to you Jesus saying, I am from above. So he already knows what the heavens consist of and what the kingdom is made of, how it functions. And it must, it must be exceedingly pleasing to him because he's beseeching the Father to transport the kingdom that is perfect in the heavens. Let this happen in the earth. He's in the earth at this time. I believe then he will oversee it because while I'm here, Father, let thy kingdom come. Father, 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 uh, if you would just touch your, your, your system, touch something, Father. To us this day, give us daily bread. Today, give us bread. Don't say tomorrow, give us bread. No, tomorrow say, give us bread. And because I need to impress on you that he is ever present. You don't have to say next year, give me bread. When you come to that day, say, give us this day, our daily bread. Each day being fresh manna. And Father, when we transgress, when we fall short of following, when we cease to pray, when we're angry, when we have forgotten your goodness, when we've forgotten to read the word. Father, when we're tempted um, beyond our endurance. Father, forgive us our trespasses. Forgive us all our trespasses, blot them out. And Father, do this because if you forgive us our trespasses, 
then we will learn forgiveness. And in so doing, we will forgive others. Forgive us of not forgiving others. Today, change our disposition. Change our reactions. Forgive us our trespasses. And Father, lead us away from temptation. Order our steps. Preempt our deadly errors. Go before us and intercept the grave error that we are about to enter into. I believe that and I know that before we have completed speaking the thought, you're already doing it because we know that you want to forgive us even more than we are willing to ask. And so, Father, Father, and do not leave us in temptation. And above all, Father, today, deliver us from our enemies. Separate us from them. Send them in another direction. But Father, more than that, cause us to love our enemies. For there are several ways of dealing with enemies. We can turn away from them. We are able to ignore them. You can separate us from them. Or simply this, we can begin to love them. Father, standing as one carrying the, the cross of Christ and the crown, one who understands what it means to be repositioned, translated. Without a shadow of a doubt, I know that yours indeed is the kingdom. And I've often wondered, some time ago, um, many years ago, wondered for my own sake, what was that thing called the kingdom? Later on, beginning to realize that this kingdom, yet invisible, is more real than any kingdom that we now experience in the earth. And so, Christ Jesus identifies this great thought. He identifies this truth that the kingdom into which you have been translated 
called the kingdom of the dear son by Paul in Colossians. Spoke to you about that a few sessions back. That this kingdom is so real that it pleased the Father to send the Son that through his blood you may be translated into it, this vast expanse of wisdom and truth and love and peace and joy and power, authority, long life. Overlaid in the word of God. Obtainable by faith. This great kingdom that Jesus prayed for, he was later to declare, the kingdom of heaven is among men. Because he had successfully brought the kingdom into the earth realm from the heavenlies that you and I may be partakers of it. So then, Father, <laughs> thy kingdom come, not externally, but thy kingdom come and supernaturally become a part of every man's existence. So that men and women will uh, uh, begin to walk in peace and unconditional love. And not forgetting, knowing the source of their provision. But also knowing that Christ Jesus is the source of eternal life through the kingdom. And so, thine is the power. Thine, O Lord, O Father, the power and the glory remains with you. forever and forever. Amen. I believe in my next broadcast, my next time of intimate fellowship with you, I will speak I will share the miracle of provision and how Jesus Christ was able to transcend time and space, open the heavens and miraculously feed 5,000. Now, I don't know where this is happening today, but I do know that somewhere a miracle is taking place. Because I have been given the work of healing, working of miracles, by an extreme faith. And because I have with me a ministry of prayer, exposition of the word, I believe that 
by the transfer of anointing and through the work of the kingdom I expect that somewhere where you are right now someone's receiving a call from the Lord someone's been given an assignment and not only given an assignment but have been receiving the conviction and the power and the strength to pick up this assignment I believe somewhere there is a five-fold ministry forming. I believe somebody is receiving a call to uh, uh, massive evangelism. And so today, Lord God, I lift up hands. And I lift up hands as Christ Jesus did with much gratitude. And I believe that Christ Jesus being our daily bread, that we have been sustained, and that these words and this gospel will sustain you because it is the kingdom into which you have been translated. And that you will be able to partake of this bread, of this water. Yeah, this this peace for which you so long and the world so hungers for that this is now and the Lord bless you increase in faith and in truth and in wisdom and in the knowledge of his will you will know the will of the Father you will rise up in your call I look forward to your testimonies as having coming to an understanding of the prophetic gift, the office of the prophet, the evangelist, the teacher, understanding the composition of the church, understanding how you fit and where you fit in. I, I, I believe and so that's all I ask you today is that by the grace of God you engage the gospel and go again search the scriptures go back through Matthew it'll bless you and by God's grace I'll help to lead you through this great book and uh, following the master's footsteps and so until next time, and this is Apostle Dr. Eureka Stewart saying this to you. Maybe you want to say this to somebody. Stand in. Stand up. And stand out. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you. I have a very special uh, uh, announcement to share with you on July 29th. 2018 this year we are launching uh, two great ministries world healing day it's important uh, it flows with the ministry gifts that I've been given uh, Beth uh, Bethesda empowered to heal uh, we will be launching these two great ministries uh, the location is 6085 Lundy's Lane in beautiful Niagara Falls. We will be doing this at 4 p.m. Uh, I, I wish by all means, I hope that you're traveling, that you're traveling to my neighborhood so that uh, you are able to attend this event. The Lord uh, bless you as you engage uh, this work. I know that this will be a blessing to you. The Lord bless you today and keep you in Jesus' name.